Okay, so every Roman poops, welcome to our the first of our Thursday afternoon lectures, inspired by Magnus Maximus's sewers found in the in the tournament. Already eliminated. Sorry. Woo! Go. Oh, that was a good jump. <laughs> okay, so this was yeah, and the other thing was like, where has all the TP gone? We're down to our, we're down to about ten rolls here, so. Wish us luck. Otherwise, we're going to have to start saving the newspapers. Um, I got to, you know, people have actually only been using toilet paper for about 150 years. The Greeks actually used smoothed over pieces of pottery. Uh, so that's one option. Um, you know, corn cobs have been used in the past. Most cultures around the world actually use water uh, in bidets and other forms. And of course, there's the timeless, just use your hand. Uh, left hands, yep, always known for uh, wiping. Uh, these are some examples of like early toilet paper. Toilet paper became like a commodity only in the 1800s, like late 1800s did it even get sold on rolls. So it's a pretty new invention. But you would think that like the Romans who brought us aqueducts, shout out to Ethan and Samantha, uh, engineering feats like concrete, um, surgical tools, shout out David Whitaker, and representative democracy, shout out Wren and Rivers. There were lots of you guys that did the Colosseum. So anyways, um, you would think that they would be able to give us something useful with bathroom hygiene, um, but you would be sadly mistaken. So where was the most common place for Romans to go to the bathroom? Uh, outside. On the walls, just like a child raised by Adam Sandler, you just pee in the streets um, was the most typical place. And we actually know this because we get lots of graffiti about this. So here's some of my favorites uh, from Pompeii. These are actual graffiti written on alleyways. Uh, one is very nice, pooper, may everything come out okay so that you can leave this place. Or Secundus defecated here and apparently he wrote that on the wall three times. So yeah. And then there's Lesbianus defecated here and he writes, hello everyone. So that's a nice little greeting. We actually see that like they try to regulate it, but it doesn't really seem to be illegal to do so. So you get warnings like watch it, you poop in this place. May you have Jove's anger if you ignore this. So sort of curses from the gods. Or we get anyone who poop, who wants to poop in this place is advised to move along. If you act contrary to this warning, you will have to pay a penalty. Apparently children will have to pay some number of silver coins and slaves will be beaten on their behinds. So there's some regulation, but these sort of tell us that it wasn't illegal. It was just locally managed by whoever owned the building they were pooping on. We even see it in graves. So apparently people urinated and pooped in cemeteries. So there's a tombstone that actually says, get out of here, pooper. It is not prudent for you to open your buttock cheeks here. Seriously, that's on a gravestone. So there you go. If you weren't just gonna go in the street or the alley or the cemetery, you might run home and go in your chamber pot. You simply sit and squat and then you throw it out of your four-story window down onto the street below. This really did happen. Uh, we hear about it in various poems. People uh, say, watch out as you walk down the alleyways, especially at night, people emptying their chamber pots. And that's actually one of the reasons that you see things like this in the streets of Pompeii, sort of these crosswalks so that the people don't have to step in the human waste that had accumulated on the roads below the apartments. And we hear about legislation that Roman cities enacted um, that would bring out the local, the city slaves to actually clean the waste from the roads and sort of uh, sweep it into the local sewer or maybe waterway even. There were some houses now that would actually have a private toilet living in luxury. Uh, here's a nice example from Pompeii. We know that sometimes they're sort of tucked away. So here's one in like a stairwell um, under the stairs, really. Herculaneum, Pompeii's sister city. 
We even know that they had upstairs bathrooms in a few examples. Of course, this pipe looks like it's leaking, so that wouldn't have been a good smell to have in your house. And we have a couple's model. Now, who wouldn't want to uh, sit next to their loved one while they uh, do their business, right? If in these quarantine times, you really can't spend too much time together. This is one of my favorites. This is actually from the Baths of Caracalla, but here you can poop like a charioteer in your very own private chariot toilet. Super exciting. Now, most toilets in private homes were actually located in the kitchen. Um, this is sort of where all the smells took place in the house, and so why not put one more smell in there? Um, you can just go ahead and do your business while mom makes dinner. Uh, we know that these uh, bathrooms, these toilets, would usually connect to what we would call a cesspit, which is kind of a less, um, a less complicated version of a septic tank, but basically a, a space that collected the human waste. And every six months or so, uh, somebody would, a slave, a household slave, would come by and clean out the cesspit. Um, we know that they would, if you had a larger home, maybe a villa, you would then use this waste to fertilize your garden, perhaps. Or if you lived in the city, uh, you might actually have a slave for a company come by and buy your excrement, and, and they would then turn around and sell it to farmers. And we actually know this was practiced. We hear about it. Um, we've got the, it's a job called the stercorii, where people who would collect the human waste and sell it as night soil. Ooh, very exciting. Now this night soil would then go on the, the agricultural products, which is actually something that's done today. Still, we use uh, manure as fertilizer. But the key is today we let it sit and we process it, uh, which gets out all of the parasites um, and infectious things that live in waste. The Romans clearly did not, as we have ample evidence of Romans having all kinds of parasites related to people eating food with feces on it. So that's fun. Um, as uh, Piers Mitchell, who's an expert on this, explains, the eggs could have gotten onto the plants and later reinfected the people who ate them. So now what do we do with all this waste? Uh, we've got the night soil, uh, but what about all this urine that's just around? Well, urine has ammonium salts, and ammonium salts are a type of cleaner. So we actually know that they're used, this is serious, they're used to whiten teeth people would brush their teeth with urine. Um, we have this story from Catullus who says, in the country of Spain, what each man urinates, he used to brush his teeth. Every morning, so the fact that your teeth are so polished just shows that you're more full of urine. So the whiter the teeth, the more you've had pee in your mouth. Okay, great. We also know that they're used for tanning leather. This is actually still used today. Um, people use animal urine to soften leather. It helps remove the fur from the animal skin and makes it more malleable for um, to turn into clothing. So if you have a leather jacket, it's probably been peed on. Now, uh, we also know that it was a Roman belief that if you added urine to uh, agricultural products, that it would help ripen them faster and make them sweeter. So we have uh, advice from Columella who says that if your pomegranate is bitter, then you need to moisten the roots with sow dung, that's pig excrement, and human uh, urine and stale urine. So you have to sit it out for a while. But probably the most popular use for urine was actually dyeing clothes and doing laundry. Again, these ammonium salts, this is the same stuff that's in your laundry detergent in your shampoo. It's a type of soap. And so it would clean the clothes and also it would bring out really rich colors, um, especially blues and reds. It would make those colors pop if it's been soaked in urine. And we get ample evidence of this from Pompeii and from Ostia. Um, 
and we even know that it became such a commodity to have access to this urine that they enacted a urine tax. So as you collect urine, you had to pay taxes on it. We know that they collected urine from homes and latrines, and we even see in Pompeii little pots set up on the side of the road encouraging people to urinate in them. So a little like pit stops that they would then collect. And then I just thought this was funny, right? You, you stomp the grapes and you stomp your clothing in urine to clean them. Now, probably one of the thing that the Romans are most famous for when it comes to restrooms is the public bathroom. And these spaces uh, dot many of the cities across the empire. These open uh, marble seats, each one with a, a hole that generally drops down to the sewer, a lot of them with marble flooring, running water, going around the channel, sort of beautifully adorned with sculpture and mosaics at times. Those nice marble seats, they look, they look great. Here's a lovely artist rendition. I apologize, all the artist reconstructions for some reason had Romans wearing pants, which I don't know why they think that. But you see there, you would have had water running through the channel, probably water in those basins in the middle for people to wash their hands or their sponges. We will get there. And it was a very uh, social, social event. One moment as I, uh, somebody is entering. Oh, it's Ethan. Hi, Ethan. All right. So these, uh, these public restrooms would have dropped down into the local sewer system, which many Roman cities had. The most famous of these is known as the Colloquia Maxima. This is in Rome itself, and it actually rivals the size of uh, sewer systems in some of the major cities today. It was built really early in uh, the founding of Rome during the monarchy. So even before the Republic, back in the 600s, it was built. Uh, and that's because the main purpose of the Colloca Maxima was not to handle our waste. It was to drain the standing water from the forum and other parts of the city. So a lot of these sewers, which ended up housing human waste, were really more of an irrigation and drainage system um, for building more, uh, building the city up more. We actually know that they were filled with the human waste from latrines, but also all the waste and garbage from the city streets would get swept either by city slaves or at the next big rainfall. All of that garbage from the street would go right back into the sewer system, which ultimately would drain back into the city's water supply. The Colloquia Maxima drains into the Tiber River. Romans get water from the Tiber River. They would be manually cleaned from time to time by public slaves or prisoners. They would be sent in there to clean them. But not always, as a group of archaeologists found, um, their measurement was 750 large sacks of human excrement recovered from the sewer system in Herculaneum. And as it was uh, found out, that sewer system actually didn't have an exit. So all of that waste was just literally piling up over time. Um, what this led to, we hear about, is all of this wonderful human waste uh, sort of fermenting in this closed space was a buildup of methane gases, which meant from time to time they would explode and have fire shoot up through the toilet seat uh, and tickle your bum, right? So a new meaning to explosive uh, diarrhea, am I right? <laughs> okay. All right, so here's the question for you. What do you think the worst part about a Roman bathroom would be? Option one, there is absolutely no privacy, friends. You saw that, there are no stalls. You are, you are hip to hip with your, with your seat mate there. So absolutely no privacy. Okay, that's not great. I, I wouldn't like that. Option two, you gotta share your toilet paper. What you are looking at is what's known as a xylospongium. It is a sponge, a sea sponge, attached to a stick. 
And we know that this is what the Romans used for toilet paper. What you would have in a Roman bathroom is a basin filled with water, sometimes with vinegar or salt water, and like five or six xylospongia in that basin. And when it was time to wipe, then you would just grab one, take care of yourself, and uh, put it back in the basin for the next guy to use. Uh, we also know that the, the running water channels around the edge, you could sort of swish it in that to get some running water to clean it off. So it was hygienic. It was fine. Yeah. Or option three, rat attack. Yes, we do hear stories um, that, you know, what else lives in sewers is rats. And so every once in a while, you'd go ahead and sit down on your public bathroom and a rat would come up and bite your tuchus. So that's something to look forward to in the public bathrooms of Rome. We hear a great story from the author Eileen who tells us a, a fish seller who lives in Spain, every night a giant octopus actually swam into the sewer from the sea and proceeded up through his house drain because he had a private toilet and he would come out of the toilet and eat all of his pickled fish stored in his pantry. Which, if you guys have heard any stories about octopus, that's entirely believable. So all this is to say that Roman toilets were definitely not hygienic. They were not about hygiene at all. This was not something that was on Romans' minds about being sanitary. Uh, and we know this from the archeological despite public restrooms and regular bathing, Romans had externally fleas, at least three different kinds of lice and bed bugs. Internally, they had hookworm, pin, pinworm, ringworm, and really long tapeworms, like 25 feet long tapeworms. And there are no fewer parasites in um, Roman times than in the times previous. So think about like Bronze Age, Iron Age, or in times subsequent, like medieval period or the Vikings. They're all equally dirty and unsanitary. All this is to say that with all their body oils and bath rituals, they would have smelled clean, but they would have had infectious disease nonetheless. And here are my sources. There's some really great stuff out there. Um, this short video is excellent. Here are two experts in the field. They do a lot of stuff with public um, history as well, so they're great to follow. And that is our 